65 year old female with chronic right hip greater trochanter bursitis. She had an MRI which shows some glute gluteus medius tendinopathy. Uh, she's kind of focal pain to touch over the greater trochanter, uh, really not that responsive to therapy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do an ultrasound guided injection today. Here we're going to view some of the anatomy over the lateral hip and pelvis. There's a little bit of a technical glitch over the proximal ITB, which I apologize for, but you can appreciate here the ITB, tensor fascial auto muscle. Also, you can appreciate this intricate neurovascular network consisting of the femoral artery, nerve, and vein uh, feeding the thigh, essentially. Now we're making the anterior thigh translucent. This is kind of a bird's eye view. Looking right over the iliac crest, you can appreciate the gluteus maximus muscle feeding into the ITB. Now rotating to an upright position, you can appreciate the posterior aspect of the psoas major muscle. Also, you can appreciate the hamstring musculature as well as the posterior sacral iliac ligament. Now rotating into a lateral decubitus position and making the gluteus maximus muscle translucent. This is an in-plane approach uh, with the probe in an axial plane over the proximal lateral thigh. And we're essentially just going right into that trochanteric bursa, which lies underneath the iliotibial band and over the gluteus medius tendon. Also here you can appreciate uh, some of the deep external rotators of the hip. Here's a somewhat inflamed trochanteric bursa and we're essentially beginning the procedure now. We're uh, injecting the bursa with a mixture of saline and cortisone. Here you can appreciate a fairly thickened iliotibial band overlying the gluteus medius tendon which then overlaps the gluteus minimus tendon. Also you can appreciate a mildly enlarged trochanteric bursa Here we can appreciate the posterior facet of the greater trochanter, which is underneath the gluteus maximus muscle. Here you can appreciate, I believe, the apex of the greater trochanter. It looks a little bit irregular. Could possibly be some calcification within the gluteus medius tendon, but I'm leading towards just an irregular apex of the greater trochanter. Here we're rotating anteriorly. You can appreciate the uh, anterior facet with the overlying gluteus minimus tendon. Here again is that irregular apex, I believe, and the gluteus medius tendon just to the right of that irregular apex versus possible intratendinous calcification. Here we are starting the procedure using a 20 gauge spinal needle, roughly two and a half inches long. This is an in plane approach. We're going from a posterior to anterior direction. See the needle on the right side of the screen, essentially just heading towards that lateral facet. You can see the posterior facet um, to the right and below the needle, and it's basically um, heading right above the gluteus medius tendon uh, between that and the iliotibial band. There may be some intrasubstance tearing of that gluteus medius tendon, which you can appreciate as well. So you can appreciate how the tensor fascia lot and gluteus maximus feed into the ITB, which may have a subtle defect on its underbelly. Now we're taking out the stylet of this spinal needle. And here again is a good view of the needle. Uh, basically going right above the juncture between the posterior facet and the lateral facet. You can see some injectate or bright hyperechoic signal coming out of the needle tip. And here we are essentially just under the um, iliotibial band. And here we're going in slow motion. You can see some dark inequic signal around the needle tip consistent with the injectate going out. Also, again, this is going underneath the ITB and we're trying to get it between the ITB and the gluteus medius tendon. Here again, you can appreciate, I believe, that defect or tear within the gluteus medius tendon overlying the lateral facet of the greater trochanter. And here, the margin or the delineation between the gluteus medius and ITB is not so clear, but I believe there's a subtle tissue plane between those two structures, which you can appreciate here is this fine line. And essentially now we're pulling out, and here you can appreciate how long this needle is. So again, you don't want to use a short needle where you won't be able to reach your target. 